All right, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna do some paintbrush ramblings here. As I, there we are. As I'm painting, I'm gonna describe some of the things I do, some of the things I know, some of the techniques I use. So, always keep your tools wet. When you're painting, keep them saturated. Pretty much stay out of a comfort zone. You do not want to have dry tools. So, keep them so saturated. Sorry if this is out of frame. Keep them saturated to the point where you are uncomfortable using them. And as you use them, get comfortable with that amount of, of saturation. Hopefully this is working here. Um, what else? As I'm cutting in, as I'm, sorry, as I'm doing this, I want to start at the top. Reason being is, as I'm cutting in, if I'm doing this, there can be, at the very bottom of these bristles, there can be paint that builds up, and I may not be uh, paying attention to it, like I'm doing as I'm filming here, and uh, it may cause a drip. I want to be able to see that drip, so rather than that drip falling into a color that I'm already using and I don't see it and it creates some kind of stupid texture at the end, I want it to drip. I want this gray to drip onto white so I can actually see it and address it before it hardens up. What else? As you can see, <laughs> if I keep in focus, as you can see, I am using, I'm gonna do a, geez, this is difficult. I'm gonna do a finish line here. I am using the toe of the paintbrush to create the finish line that I want. This is not easy. This is like one-handed shooting. One of my first videos I did. So, let's see if I can shrink this and keep my hand out of the camera. There we go. A little bit better. Um, the, the body of the paintbrush all these other bristles outside of the toe, from heel to toe, they hold the paint. The very toe is what maneuvers it into place. So that's, that's how you cut in. You don't just use the whole three inch brush, get in there, to, uh, to do your handiwork, to do your, your uh, finished lines. This is very difficult. <laughs> I didn't, didn't think it was going to be this difficult. Hopefully more than half of this is in frame. Um, what else? What else? What else? I had so much going on in my head when I was thinking this video. And now it's all gone. Uh, most of this I would be rolling. That's another principle that my my old boss taught me was Roll what you can't brush and Spray what you can't roll. Now I know not everybody's gonna have an airless paint sprayer. Those things are expensive and It's really a professional's tool generally other than your little Wagners or something like that. Those things are really garbage though. Um, I guess if you do have a Wagner, you just got to keep it super clean. Don't let anything dry out. Don't let anything get clogged. Use really clean paint. Clean, uh, uh, clean your screens and everything. Let's see, what else? Wiggling. If I want to get my bristles into position, I can act like I have low blood sugar and like shake them into position. Just like that. And then as I'm dragging for that cut in line, like I said, all these other bristles, sorry about the fingers, all these other bristles are holding the paint. Well, as I'm dragging it, they're now, they're now navigating that paint. This isn't the best example because I'm not using the whole brush, but, and my hand's in the way. 
but as I'm dragging it, they are maneuvering that paint to the toe where I want it. Similar to a Sharpie. I leave Sharpies upside down to most people, how they, how they like to have them cap up. I like to have them cap down because the gravity will pull that ink into the position of the point of the pen where it's going to be used. Very similar to, well, analogy, similar to how I'm using the paint bristles to uh, pull the paint into position where I want it. That's why you see the angle of the paintbrush bristles. Some, some brushes are flat and that's mainly for like dragging, for like painting a fence or something like that, whitewashing a fence. Yeah, see most of this would get rolled, but I'm just gonna brush it. It's fast enough. Um, constantly dunking, actually I need more paint than that. Constantly dunking, because like I said, gotta keep it wet. This paint is not giving me the best coverage. So that's, that's a hitchhiker, or not hitchhiker. That's a, that's a holiday when you can see a little piece of white or something like that, like these things. Jeez, the light sucks. Right there, you can see white against the gray, and that is called a holiday. That's where I took a vacation, and I didn't get my work done right there. Uh, the paint doesn't cover that well, so I'm, I'm leaving my, my, uh, my coat fairly thick. Sorry if I'm making anybody seasick while I'm going back and forth. And as you can see, I'm not, not trying to do too much all at once. So, constantly, constantly dunking. Keep it wet. Painting is a controlled run. So if you can imagine, I throw a bunch of paint on this wall, it's gonna start dripping down and running. Well, that's actually what you want. You wanna get this material transferred. So get it onto the wall or the ceiling, whatever, and, and uh, transfer it around. Get the material on and push it to where you want it. Control that run. Backwards. Backwards cut in. And the train's gonna come by. I'll give you a shot of that. Um, what else? So my, my first boss, Keith Okonski, in San Diego, California, he was a painting contractor for a number of years before he became a general contractor. And like I was telling Dylan last night, he was a general contractor that worked for a fairly large property management group. So he got a ton of very, very wide variety of work. All manner of jobs from building, uh, building staircases to replacing dishwashers to just all manner of maintenance on buildings. So through that, I got a very, very wide variety of, uh, of experience. Let's bring you back to the painting now. And through that experience, I learned very, very quickly a bunch of different stuff. I also had the desire to learn, which greatly helps out. If you don't want to learn something, <laughs> Good luck learning it. Um, what else? I don't care about cutting it on the outside because everything's getting gray. Sorry about the fingers again. And I'll probably cut this one off here in just a minute because I'm running out of things to say. Like I said, I had so many tips and tricks and things running through my head, but then I pressed record and it all just escaped. Said so bye, Hyder. I'm out. Um, what else? Oh, so I'm doing the brushing first. And my dad did a little bit of painting. If you are familiar with the restaurant uh, Casa de Pico in San Diego, it's a pretty, pretty famous one. He painted in the original one that was in Old Town. He painted the mural 
not mural, the, the border that was on the ceiling, or I guess it was on the wall up to the ceiling. He painted that, oh man, I don't even know, sometime in the late 70s, I think. Sorry. So, I thought that was pretty cool. My dad was a painter at one time. He, uh, he asked me though one time, what do I do first? Do I brush first or do I roll first? And I actually had to think about it for a second because it's not, it's just something I do. It's not something I've really been, ever been taught like, hey, you gotta roll first or you gotta brush first or whatever. I just, I just always brushed first. Ooh, excuse me. That was a burp. And the reason being is brushing leaves strokes, right? You can see the stroke marks. You can see the grain from where the brush has, has, has been drug. So, jiggle it in there. So, I don't oftentimes want that, especially on, on walls and lids. I don't want brush strokes that you can see up to stipple from rolling. Stipple is the, the texture that's left from, from rolling. So I don't want two different textures, so I want to actually minimize that and do all my brushing first, then do my rolling up to my brushing. That rolling will then make the, uh, the brush strokes pretty much disappear. It'll, it'll, the, uh, the texture will be more consistent. And that's what I want. Consistency. Yeah, shake it in there. Get it in there. Get the material on there and move it around. This really is painting. Getting it done. Keeping things wet and just, man, that flow. Man, nice piece of crap on my uh, uh, paintbrush. Now on my finger. But yeah, that's, uh, that's painting. Get it done. Don't fart around. Um, brush first, I use a six inch weenie roller for virtually all my painting, if I'm gonna be rolling. The nine inch rollers, yeah, that's good and handy, but something like this, this is a larger job. I don't want to be pushing a nine inch roller everywhere. I would much rather do what I call the Lance Armstrong technique, where I'm, I'm doing more reps, but with less weight. Um, the analogy on a bicycle would actually be I'm using a smaller gear, smaller inch gear. So I'm doing less, uh, I'm doing more revolutions, but less power behind each revolution. Boy, I'm really rambling, paintbrush ramblings. And so uh, he would actually do the same amount of work as other cyclists, but it would be spread over a longer, not a longer time, because he was a faster rider. What am I trying to say here? Same amount of work, more reps, less strength needed per rep. So rather than me toting around a big nine inch roller everywhere, pushing it up against the ceiling because it's nice and heavy and saturated with paint, I would much rather wield a six inch weenie roller that's gonna be much lighter and I'll have much more longevity over the day. That's what I was trying to say, something like that. Who knows, hopefully you're not confused. But this video is starting to get long and I want you guys to actually watch the whole thing and comment and like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. So, I'm gonna let you go because I don't think I have anything else to say. And I'm like really struggling to look for something to say because I know as soon as I turn this off, everything's gonna come flooding back. All these things that I had to say are gonna come back and say, hey, Hyder, you forgot me. I'm gonna say, yeah, I did. Where were you? You know, I'm just talking to myself and you're listening. And we're almost at 15 minutes, so thanks. <laughs> I'll catch you guys on the next one.